This is Ricky Van Shelton. In 1993, two things happened to him that you might think led to the one-time CMA male vocalist of the year's scrubbing from popular country music playlists. The first is he was kicked out of the Grand Old Opry. The second is he said consultants were ruining country music. Yep, that'll just about do it. Just ask Natalie Maines or Charlie Rich. You get a reputation as difficult in this town, and you're done for. And before you stop seeking out some of his ten or so number one hits, consider the other thing that happened in the early 90s. Y'all, I think we got this one all wrong. The truth is, Ricky Van Shelton's career did kind of tank around 1993. We made this visualization to help you understand Here's Ricky in 1989, 1990, 1991, 1992. Pretty much nothing from albums released 1993 or later made an impression, and by 2006 he was done. I mean it, he quit, like with a letter and everything. Yeah, this is just a wild thing that is suddenly relevant again because Granger Smith kind of pulled off the same move in 2023. CMT covered a letter that Ricky wrote in May of that year where he announced he was moving back home to Virginia with his wife. Shout out to Country Standard Time for this legacy post during which they share the full letter. In the 374 word letter, Ricky said he'd been asked to be released from all of his performance obligations. That must have gone over real well. I have not made this decision lightly, he writes, and I deeply regret any inconvenience that this may cause to those of you who have already made plans to attend some of my performances. He also promised to continue using his website, but a quick check there shows that it looks like an old GeoCities website. More music was possible. Quote, I'll always be grateful for the support, encouragement, prayers, yada, yada, yada. And like that, He disappeared like Marty McFly disappeared from the photo during the climatic scenes of Back to the Future. And that was kind of it. Ricky is still a Grand Ole Opry member, but the Opry notes that he hasn't played there since 2004. There we also learn he's a distinguished painter, pilot, collector, and author. What the heck happened? Cue the throwback music. It's time for a deeper look. Find Ricky Van Shelton's music under S for Shelton at record stores, not V for Van, that's his middle name. He's from Grit, Virginia, something that every journalist ever points out when telling his story. A 1991 profile in the Washington Post shares how he took to country music at his brother's urging, but as early as 1958 he was playing songs for anybody with a quarter to spare. Still, success came late. His wife Betty got a job in Nashville in 1984, so they moved. A little knows a guy knows a guy put him in front of a record label executive, and on February 26, 1987, he released his self titled debut album. A cover of a Conway Twitty song called Somebody Lied was his first number one hit. Almost all last night. A Mel Tillis cover and a Roger Miller cover hit number one next then a Wayne Kemp hit from 1980 before my personal favorite, From Jack to a King. Lady played her hand just right. I love his voice here. It's unique with a subtle warble. An artist named Ned Miller made it a hit in 1963 before he quit recording several years later. The other Ricky Van Shelton song that I really like is called Living Proof from 1989. You just can't forget it. Lord knows the guy was hot before the decade turned over, having won the ACM Top New Male Vocalist Award, the CMA Horizon Award, and in 1989, the Male Vocalist of the Year Award. He was also just hot. Country Thing Daily sourced People magazine for a quote that would read, Women were thoughtful enough to pin their names and phone numbers inside their bras before tossing them on stage. I couldn't find that People article, but it gets us to the turning point of this story. Old Ricky wasn't doing right by old Betty. And how do we know that? Well, Betty wrote a book all about it. It's called She Stays, and you can still find it on Amazon. It's about how she risked everything to stay with Ricky, despite his infidelity and their separation. Talking to the Chicago Tribune, she admitted Ricky was embarrassed by it all. Quote, he's ashamed of what he did, and it's an embarrassment to him to think that he had gotten so totally out of control 
that he was ready to commit suicide. If you go back to that Washington Post story, you see signs of a man struggling. Quote, rock and roll artists tour, country music artists work. From January to January, five days a week, it doesn't leave a whole lot of time for your personal life. Later, he'd talk about having to deal with five different vice presidents at his label, plus two business managers, band, crew, and more before making any decision. I'll say this, sometimes I look back on grit and remember the good old days, he said. I've dropped a link in the description section for this next part. It's worth reading Ricky's full testimony to appreciate how he turned his life around. It was August 1994 when Ricky admitted he'd been addicted to alcohol. By this point, he was sometime removed and was speaking as a man who literally battled the devil. Hang with me to understand. He recalls being at the top of his career in 1991, but his personal life was in shambles. When he started touring full-time in 1988, he took to the bottle to relieve the stress and within a few years, he knew he had a problem. Quote, Once when Betty asked me what was wrong between us, I'd admitted I'd betrayed our wedding vows, he says in the essay at Guideposts. When I was drunk, I had no self-control. Everything changed one night in California when he awoke so full of shame that he says if he had a gun, he would have pulled the trigger. During a three-state drive home, he lay on his bed when a cloud with eyes floated above him. It was the face of the devil. Quote, It sounds unbelievable, but I know what I saw. That face kept coming closer and closer. Ugly, overpowering, evil. I was terrified. Sobbing and punching wildly in the air, he said, Maybe I can't beat you, but I know who can. God can beat you. The devil recoiled and shriveled up in front of him. Ricky said that at that point, he not sipped a drop of alcohol since. At that point, he knew he'd reconnected with God. Several years ago, we made a secret history of Bobby Gentry video where we explored her mysterious disappearance, and I'll link to it here. I think it's safe to say that in 2023, finding Ricky Van Shelton is slightly easier than finding Bobby, but not much. He vanished like that devil did, back home to Virginia to live a quiet life. Remember when I said he was an author? I mean, he's a children's author. Books like Quacker Meets Mrs. Moo, Tales from a Duck Named Quacker are part of his bibliography on Amazon. Those early to mid-90s books came after his transformation. In 1992 or 1993, he would be removed from the Grand Old Opry House during a recording for a CMA program but it was because he was being asked to compromise his sound and he didn't want to do that. And he does admit to saying that radio consultants were killing radio. That came from an Associated Press article from 1997 and led to him asking for and receiving a release from Sony Nashville. This full picture of a small town boy with big dreams and no real understanding of the stresses that comes with it helps us to understand those moments. His exit didn't begin during a battle with suits, it began on the back of a bus years earlier. Like Granger Smith, he followed his faith and it led him to a different calling.